you very much, Kevin. Um, all right, so here we have the um, the SOMAG DSM 400. The IX controller sits on top of the phase one branded DSM within a Planix unit above. Overview of the workflow and software used throughout the aerial system. We have IX plan for the plant flight planning, which is a rebrand of topo flight. In the image acquisition, we have IX flight for the pilot and operator navigation, as well as IX capture to QAQC the images as they're taken, as well as control the camera settings. In the download and post processing, we use IX capture to conform the raw images in the IQ format to TIFFs, use Capture One for color balancing adjustments, and then pause pack to generate your exterior orientation. Also, the data can then be ingested into several photogram photogrammetric softwares available today. Uh, Info, SimActive, PCI, all compatible with phase one imagery. Uh, without further ado, I'll let Kevin jump into more specs of the camera. Thank you, Olivia, and welcome everyone. I'm excited to share a few more of the technical specs of the system with you. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, there are a number of great webinars uh, on our website already, and that cover um, a number of items more in depth. Um, items such as the metric calibration, the accuracy of the camera, um, and as well as some great webinars and other uh, features that uh, Phase 1 has as well. So I'm not going to touch on some of those objects, uh, those subjects, but um, I wanted to let you know that that's out there um, and a great source for answering additional information if it's not covered in this uh, webinar here today. Um, about the camera, you know, the heart of the camera, of course, are two of our IXM 150 megapixel cameras. Um, in these cameras, the, the image sensors are actually rotated so that the long side of the sensor is along the flight line. Um, and this allows for a slight overlap, uh, probably roughly about 10% uh, between the two images. And then when stitched together in post-processing, they form the single large format image. Um, this uh, optical integration uh, enables probably an increased field of view for the system, as well as resulting in the, the higher aerial productivity, and it also results in better stereoscopic accuracy uh, due to the increased field of view uh, along the flight line, as well as the larger base to height parameters. Um, the, the tr we have two different options, one just a RGB uh, system, or we also have a three-band system, which would then utilize a third camera to collect the entire scene and then have it pan sharpened uh, on top of the RGB imagery. Um, and then also during the IX capture image processing uh, process, the lens calibration data is uh, seamlessly applied, uh, thus resulting in a distortion-free image that's ready for your AT software. Uh, next slide, Olivia. So the resulting image, of course, is uh, 20,000 pixels by 14,118 pixels, um, which is a, is a massive footprint, especially when contrasted to the small physical size and weight of this system. Uh, the entire four band system comes out to be around 72 pounds. Um, so this is a very small compact unit that uh, can go into a large number of platforms, um, but yet it has a, a massive footprint on the ground. Uh, other impressive features, of course, are the, the phase one RS shutters. Um, this will allow for an extremely high capture rate at close to two frames per second. Uh, the shutter speed, of course, is, is up to one to two thousandth of a second, and uh, allow for the collecting of extremely detailed GSDs at a much faster speed. Um, I did also want to mention that if you guys have any uh, questions, um, you know, please type them in on the side and uh, we will uh, get those answered as best we can uh, at the end of the presentation or, uh, you know, be happy to talk about them later. Next slide. 
All right, so um, of course the IXM 150 megapixel cameras uh, are equipped with the uh, 3.76 micron CMOS sensor. Um, these are then uh, paired with two Rodenstock 90 millimeter lenses and uh, a 50 millimeter lens uh, with the third camera system would be used with a, an IR filter to collect the near IR wavelength uh, if you need that four band system. Uh, talking about the example here, on the far right of the screen, you can see that there is a, a two and a half centimeter GSD image. Um, and then just to the left of that, you can see that image enlarged to about 100%. Uh, and you can see some great detail in the solar panels uh, of that building right there. Um, so, you know, extremely pr good proof that uh, we can collect uh, high GSD imagery um, with this system. Next slide. The high capture rate of this of this system uh, definitely is an advantage to us. With uh, phase one in 2013, uh, we introduced our uh, blur control technology. Uh, for This is what we use for our forward motion control. Um, we don't use a software solution, but uh, we utilize the high speed RS shutters um, that we have, uh, and it will uh, definitely take care of the, the image blur. You can see uh, some examples here on the screen. Um, one, you know, the far left image, of course, being uh, an image that does not have uh, the blur control um, applied. Uh, the middle one, of course, does have the blur control. You can see some great detail. And of course, m my favorite image, you know, a very impressive image of a, a small jet going the opposite direction of the survey aircraft, uh, resulting in very clear detail uh, on the plane as well as the, the ground below it. Next slide. Um, we need to, of course, touch on the, the high dynamic range of this camera system. Um, you know, for many projects, you'll probably not be collecting uh, imagery this late into the evening, as with this example. Um, but, you know, you may have projects where you have challenging low light or high light conditions, uh, and you need to make sure that you maintain detail in your bright roofs and the dark shadow areas. Um, so that's one advantage of, of the phase one system. We have a very large dynamic range. We can collect data uh, and allow us to maintain that detail in the shadows and the highlights, um, which, which is a huge advantage to allow you to increase your productivity uh, for projects that uh, will allow it. Um, I'm going to hand it back to Olivia. Uh, she's going to discuss some of the gains uh, the 280 meg megapixel system, uh, the efficiency gains, I should say, as compared to other phase one systems and, you know, some against some of our competitor systems as well. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, as Kevin said, I set up a flight plan to do a comparison with the IXM 150 megapixel camera with a 50 millimeter lens and the 280 megapixel camera that comes um, with the 90 millimeter lens, and that is not uh, optional to change. However, the plan was done at 15 centimeters. It shows a local county in Colorado that was about 4,200 square miles with an average elevation of about 5,000 feet within that county. Uh, did the standard settings for the flight plan of 6030. Um, average flight height for flight line height for the 150 was about 12,000 feet MSL and the 280 megapixel flight plan jumped up to almost 17,000 average flying height per flight line. The 150 megapixel camera had 91 flight lines, whereas the 280 had 63. The number of exposures for the 150 megapixel was 12,000 and the 280 megapixel camera system cut the total number of exposures in half down to about 6,000, as well as um, going from 4,721 total flight line miles to 3,210. All right, and a little bit of information of the flight altitudes for seven and a half centimeter GSD, the IXM 150 with the 50 millimeter lens puts you up about 3,000 feet with the 280 megapixel system at almost 4,000. And uh, 
through similar uh, two other systems on the market that are not made by phase one, averaging 190 megapixels and 235 have put your flying heights at 3,281 and 3,870. With the aerial survey productivity of seven and a half centimeter GSD, the IXM 150 um, is about 166 square kilometers per hour, where the 280 jumps up to 235. Again, the two competitive systems with 190 megapixels and 235 um, doesn't quite match up to the 280, so it's quite productive as far as um, your total square kilometers acquired in air. And it's also gonna cut down your flight lines. Uh, to conclude, um, we're going to be going on an in-flight aerial tour, bringing the 280 megapixel system to local airport offices. Uh, locations are being booked, so the opportunity for you to register, uh, go ahead and go to the phase one page to register or contact Kevin and I, and we'll be happy to put you on the route. Kevin, over to you. All right. Um, we, we definitely uh, appreciate uh, the chance to discuss uh, a broad overview of the, the 280 megapixel system. Um, you know, it, we feel that this system can comfortably handle uh, both your large area orthophotography projects uh, with its large image width, uh, as well as uh, be able to perform on large scale 3D mapping projects. Uh, the fast shutter speed with the high image capture rate um, just makes this a very unique and well-rounded system. Um, of course, the small weight and size of the system will definitely allow it to fit comfortably into any aircraft um, and uh, make it uh, you know, a very useful uh, tool in your fleet. Um, of course, uh, I do mention at the top of this, the slide affordability which you know, I'm sure many of you uh, are wondering about. And on the next slide. There they are. Uh, we got uh, a, a wonderful uh, complete system, complete four band system. And that does include the, the DSM 400 mount, uh, our IX controller, all the software needed for the system, and uh, in these pricing examples, uh, they're paired with uh, an Aplanix Pause AV310, although that can be paired with uh, any uh, of the Aplanix systems or, or other um, inertial systems that you may have and want to use. Uh, we can definitely help you with that. Uh, the three band system, of course, is a little less. Um, and, uh, you know, we're happy to. Uh, discuss these with you. These are the, the list prices and uh, we're, we're really excited to to uh, discussing them further with you. The, our contact information for myself and for Olivia are there on the top of the screen. Um, so this kind of uh, completes our rough overview of the 280 megapixel system. Um, and uh, we're gonna respond to any questions you guys have either that have been asked or um, if you want to contact us, we'd be happy to discuss them further. Um, you know, we certainly look forward to uh, uh, the conversations, and, and hopefully, we'll see many of you in in June on our uh, aerial flight tour. All right, and that can. All right, uh, no questions at this time. Again, there's Kevin and I's contact information. Uh, uh, looks like. Looks like we got one there. Um, the question was asked, can I upgrade my 100 megapixel camera system to the 280 megapixel system? Um, yeah, um, certainly we're, we're definitely willing to, uh, many of the components of the phase one system can be uh, used in upgrades and uh, uh, just depends on what complete systems you've got and uh, what you need, and we'll definitely work on uh, Taylor making that uh, for for you. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, the this question about uh, do you offer competitive trade-in? Uh, certainly. Uh, once again, like I said, it just uh, depends on what components you have and need, and and uh, we'll we'll definitely uh, take into account of what you have. Kevin, we have one more. Oh. Yeah, it looks like we got several more on there. You want to take some? Sure. Are both images saved and then stitched together? Yes, they are converted into two TIFFs and two, or sorry, I guess um, IAQs or TIFFs are merged in a step in IX Capture to make them one image. Let's see what's happening. Let's see what SOMAG mount is used, and that's the DSM 400. And what about storage units, size and interface? Um, those are, um, it's a solid state uh, dual hard drive uh, that's integrated into the IX uh, controller. Um, so it's uh, two, uh, I wanna say they're one terabyte uh, drives, although other sizes can be used uh, if need be. Um, that are that are mirrored and stuck into uh, uh, the IX controller, um, and that's uh, uh, all interfaced in that. Uh, we what, have one. Is, yeah, oh, what is the sorry, slower shutter speed? Let's see. Um, well, the the, the, shut, the speed of the shutter is going to be dependent on. Uh, the speed of the aircraft, um, what you're trying to accomplish, and therefore, as because we use it for our blur motion control, um, you know, the faster the shutter speed is what will allow for uh, that uh, blur uh, correction. Um, and so, you know, obviously, if you're screaming across the ground, you want the higher shutter speed. But if you got a slower aircraft, uh, that shutter speed can uh, be slowed down um, to allow for uh, different settings. Um, so I, the the shutter speed can get sl a lot slower. It just depends on on the speed of your aircraft. Um, so I'll be happy to uh, send you uh, some uh, different charts showing that. Um, so I'd be to answer that question. I'll, I'll reach out to you uh, a little more. I'm and. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Your turn, your turn. Okay. Can you deliver now? Um, dependent on, you know, a PO or some type of receipt, we're about three to four weeks out on delivery. And what aircraft limitations are there? Um, really just being able to uh, have the camera hole um, large enough to uh, get the the system in there um you know if you have a uh, I, I would say some of the stc holes i've seen for a 172 may not uh, allow for it but i've seen stcs for other 172s that'll allow for it so um it just depends on uh, what your aircraft configuration is um, but i don't see uh power consumption wise our system is about 40 percent less uh, than other competitive systems out there. Um, so, you know, we definitely don't have as many, uh, as much need for high alternator uh, output. Um, you know, of course, you got to be able to have your uh, antenna on there, but uh, all the standard uh, installations. Additional equipment. Uh, well, the system does come with a pilot display and an operator display uh, for the aircraft. Uh, that'll show all your different monitoring. Yes, the IR uh, image would then cover the entire footprint uh, for both the uh, both images put together. So yes, you'd have a seamless uh, four band image uh, when it's processed. And just so the audience knows, the question was, does the IR image footprint cover both footprints of the RGB cameras? Hmm. All right. Is it possible to rent 
the solution to do production tests. Um, depending on our conversations, we're happy to come and do a demo uh, at your local office. So if you're interested, again, just please contact Kevin or I and we can make arrangements to set up a flight demo for you. And also just throwing back to the aerial tour, um, you know, we will have the solution in an aircraft if there are uh, different uh, test sites that, uh, you know, would be required of you to have flown before a purchase decision could be made, then we'd be happy to uh, discuss those options for you as well. All right, next question, what software application does the stitching and four band stacking? And that is the software IX Capture, which will do the stacking and stitching as well as convert raw, to I, um, raw image to TIFF, as well as apply the camera calibration files. And let's see, the final image that is saved, what file size is that? Um, that's a good question. Kevin, do you have that off the top of your head? Yeah, so the typical image size, once again, it depends on if you're doing a three band image or a four band image. Uh, the typical TIFF, uh, non-compressed TIFF, eight band um, is around 833 megabytes for the three band uh, image and uh, about 1.1 gigs for the four band image. Once again, that's uncompressed and uh, as an eight bit. All right, thank you, Kevin. Next question. Are there other focal length options? There are not. This system comes with the 90 millimeter Rodenstock lens, and that's the only lens that this camera system is compatible with. All right. How does the post-processing time compare with the single camera systems? Kevin, do you know that one? Um, it, it does take a little bit longer. Obviously, you you have uh, the additional step to uh, stitch the imagery together, um, whereas the single camera systems, um, you don't have that requirement. So unfortunately, it, it does take a little bit longer. Uh, the speed of which, you know, will be dependent on what uh, machine you have uh, doing the processing. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's still a very uh, quick process but you know, unfortunately it does take a little bit longer due to the size of the imagery. Kevin, this one's for you. Does the IX controller have RAID configuration, R-A-I-D? You know, that one is one I'm gonna have to get back to you on. Um, from my understanding, uh, it does not, but uh, um, I'll need to, to verify that. Okay. And let's see. Let me read the next. Are the lenses interchangeable? Unfortunately, with this system, no. Okay. Could you clarify the frame rate? Um, yeah, so... It's not quite just due to the, the size of the image. Uh, the shutter is definitely capable of collecting at two frames per second, um, just due to the time it takes to, to write the imagery. Um, it it's, does take a little bit longer. So it's not quite two, two frames per second. Um, it's, it's closer to about 1.6 to 1.9, but uh, uh, in most applications, I mean, that's still a lot faster than uh, other other systems out there. And we're talking, taking two shots per second uh, is still extremely fast. Okay, uh, this one's for you, Kevin. Um, not using TDI or any other FMC, do you foresee any performance in night flights for mapping light pollution and the like? Sorry, can you read that one, one, one more time? Sure. Not using TDI or any other FMC, do you foresee any performance in night flights, light pollution, and the like mapping? Uh, 
you know, that's uh, that's one I think we're definitely going to have to take to uh, some of our uh, more technically sound reps at this time. Um, I I don't see um, that it can be used uh, it, for night imagery just due to the required slower shutter speeds. But uh, once again, it would depend on the speed of your aircraft. Okay. So uh, let's let's definitely talk offline because it would just a lot of that would depend on your application. I'd, I'd really like to talk to you about that one. Okay, thank you. Another question. Um, um, I, I, did, I was corrected. It is uh, two frames per second. Um, the, they, they did uh, change that from some of their earlier technical documents, um, but it, it does uh, it is capable of two frames per second. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, is the FMS similar to other FMSs out there? Um, I would, I don't think it's exactly similar. It's a topo flight based. So they have IX plan, then goes into IX flight, which is your aircraft pilot and operator project navigation. Um, you can go to the phase one industrial website and download a temp version, and you can go ahead and make a flight plan and fly a project in simulation mode if you'd like to see um, you know, firsthand example of what the flight management system is like. All right. Okay, is there a possibility to fly the system in a powered ultralight aircraft without operator? As far as- Yeah, I mean, I'd Go say ahead. it's possible. Um, just depends. I mean, obviously, talk about a, a powered ultralight. It just depends on what the uh, limitations, you know, the lift limitations of the ultralight are. Um, you know, uh, it could it be installed in a single seat ultralight? Eh, it might be questionable uh, as a as a complete system. Now, if you're just breaking it out and putting in cameras and uh, not using a gyro mount, uh, it could be possible, but the uh, FMS does allow for um, single person operation. I mean, it, it can definitely be set up ahead of time and uh, it'll work uh, with just the pilot. Okay, thank you. Let's see, here's the next one. Uh, did we test other aerial triangulation software and info? Any specific tips um, for in setting up the camera calibration parameters? There's um, pause a Planix pause pack Cal QC is another software used to set up the calibration parameters, and uh, we don't have any out of the ordinary tips to set up those parameters at this time. You know, uh, be be happy. You know, we've we've tested it uh, uh, with info. You know, we obviously have uh, our system with uh, a number of people have used different systems. You know, uh, some active comes to mind or other software systems out there. So uh, let's definitely talk offline on that. Um, it just depends on uh, what what it is you're working with and how we can help. But uh, Definitely willing to talk to you. Make sure we get that set up right for you. All right, one more. Let's see. Are these storage units interchangeable between flights? Yes. And there is no RAID. I, I did read through there, and there's the, there is no RAID on the storage units. Okay. And we have another question. Um, have we flown this with LIDAR? integration uh not yet but that is we'll have the results for that in the future here shortly one okay, let's see um all right Let's see, is it possible? Okay, Kevin, this one for you. Is it possible to use the system in a 12 volt power supply aircraft? 
the the cameras um, are capable of working with 12 volt, um, but uh, it, it's is definitely the I believe the IX controller is designed more to run with the 28 volt. So no, unfortunately, I'd say that you're you're better off um, for the system for the phase for the complete uh, PAS system because of the IX controller. You will have to have a 28 volt uh, aircraft. Right. And then we have a hi from Romania. Okay, let's see. Um, I believe that concludes our questions. Um, let's, oh, what is the minimum focus distance for UAV usage? I don't think. Kevin? Um, well, from... Was a minimum focus distance for the USV use. Well, the uh, the system uh, itself, I wouldn't necessarily. I mean, 72 pounds for a complete system is is a bit heavy for a for a UAV, at least from my understanding. But uh, I would say it's probably for focus purposes um, about 150 meters is what I, I think would be uh, for the focus distance would would be the the minimum. Okay. All right. All right. And then again, just want to touch on the fact that the frame rate is two seconds. Two frames per second is still uh, about two times faster than most competitive systems in the market today. Um, okay. And also just a note, the power is regulated via the controller um, and the Aplanix in the SOMAG is done through the controller as well. Just me. Okay, Kevin, anything you need to add? No, just, uh, you know, we'll review these questions, just making sure that, uh, you know, if we missed anything, my apologies, and we'll definitely uh, follow up with you um, on on if the, uh, uh, if we missed any questions, once again, my apologies, and we'll definitely uh, follow up um, yeah, offline. So, thank you guys. Uh, once again, our contact information is below. Okay. All right. And that concludes again. If you'd like to see this PowerPoint again, or it will be on the phase one. And uh, we'll reach website. out uh, with some of the answers, to this, uh, some of those questions, and uh, I look forward to talking to you. All right.